Aloha, I'm Robert with Blue Planet. This is my buddy Eli. We're gonna record some tips for wing foiling today. One thing I wanted to mention that I see a lot of people getting wrong is attaching your wing to something um, before you pump it up basically, because once you pump up the wing, it becomes like an airplane. It can just take off a uh, gust of wind and your wing will fly away. So it helps to, um, to keep it kind of low to the ground. Like if you attach your leash to something that's low to the ground, I like to kind of put the leash underneath my board and then maybe run it around my mast to attach it. So that way uh, uh, when a wind gust comes, it doesn't lift up the leading edge and um, fly away. It's a smart way to eat up this slap rather than just tying it and having that full length though. Know, yeah. The board can still lift up and pick up momentum. Yeah, so and what I've seen people do is like have their foil upside down and then attach the, you know, attach the leash up here somewhere, you know, to the, to the foil. But obviously, I mean, that, this is not a good idea because when a gust comes and uh, lifts up your wing, this, uh, it, it tends to lift up the leading edge, which gives it more lift. And then this can tip over, fall right into your wing and, and cut a big hole into it. So that's what you're trying to avoid, um, the foil getting anywhere near your wing. All right. So, and another thing, oh, oh and then Eli has uh, another technique too for securing the wing. Yeah. This way the board helps weigh it down, keeping it behind the leading edge. But you always want to make sure your foil tips are far away. You can also stand it up like this, uh, but your board is a little more likely to tip over and fall or whatnot. So I kind of like to just lay it here. And that way the weight of the board also helps keep it down. Yeah, because when it's really windy, you never know. Anything can happen. Yeah, so you definitely want to keep that leading edge low to the ground. That's the, probably the most important thing. Just don't let the wing leading edge come up high. Um, so and another thing is when you're paddling out today, we're going to paddle out over shallow reef with the boards upside down, uh, prone paddling with the you know foil sticking up. So um, with the off, the wind is offshore, so we have to be really careful not to let the wing kind of uh, drift behind us as we're paddling, because then the wind can just lift it up and blow it over top of you and, and basically fall on top of the foil. And uh, I've, that has happened to me before and I cu cut a hole into the wing before my session even started. So it was really frustrating. So what I do now is I kind of keep the leash really close to my, to, to my chest. Um, I usually just lay on the leash, but you can also like tie it to your waist leash. And then that way the wing stays next to you. The wind kind of blows it next to you. And I sometimes use my leg too to kind of push it that way so it doesn't get behind me and can't, can't flip over but basically try to keep it next to me and not, not let it go behind me. And then uh, you, you had a technique you wanted to share too, right? Yeah, sometimes, so if the wind's blowing this way and we're paddling out this way, sometimes I'll paddle this way, keep the wing behind me, but put my foot on it to help weigh it down. And when I'm paddling, I'll kind of angle and drift diagonally with the wind. Um, that way you can get your full paddle strokes in and um, the wing stays a little downwind from flipping. And also while you're paddling, anytime your board is upside down, you really wanna make sure that you're aware of what your wing is doing. At the first instant, if you feel your wing starting to pick up, it's a really good idea to just quickly flip your board and get the foil, uh, get the sharp points of the foil under the water. You know, cause once that wing stands up and comes down, it can happen in an instant and uh, care pretty immediately. So just something to think about. Um, so another pointer, like when you come in over shallow reef, like at the end of your session and we're coming in super shallow, I was telling you like a good, good way to do it. What I do is I kind of let myself fall backwards and I keep my feet in the stra foot straps and I kind of use the foot straps to lever up my foil so I can then like just tip it upside down mm -hmm. and grab it before, um, before it hits the, the reef. Like this, you know, like my, my foil is still pretty new, but it's already got a few marks from the reef and it's really hard to avoid it when you when you're in the shallow spot but um, obviously I'm trying to trying to keep it as nice as possible so um, that's what I do when I'm when I know it's going to touch the bottom if I come down I just fall backwards and kind of try to keep it out of the water that's a really good technique and when you do do that and you kind of kick your board up you want to make sure you kick your board upwind and you have your wing downwind so you kind of want to be aware of when it's blowing because if you kick your board downwind and your wind is upwind kind of flip over towards your foil too. Yeah, 100%. So just being aware of the wind angle and um, where your wind is, that's, where your wing is, that's really important. 
So another thing is like most, most people uh, wear their wrist, I mean, wear the leash around their wrist, which works fine, you know, but um, when you're paddling with, you know, if you're using your arms to paddle, then having it on your wrist is really bothersome because you're like towing the wing with one arm, you know, every time you take a stroke. So what I like to do is put, put it around my waist and I have a, you know, waist leash. So I just um, slide the wrist leash over the waist leash basically. And then I wear, wear it around my waist. Um, and, and then, then the recoil goes to your board. Yeah. So then I got like a shock cord attached to my board and that's uh, a real leash that's attached to that. So this is how I, my setup here and I got like a double leash on here. Oh, nice. broke before. <laughs> But Sorry. yeah, so, so I have the, this leash in the front and then this kind of in the back, back to the side. And then everything's attached together. I can um, paddle with my arms free. I don't have the waist leash getting in my way. The only thing about the waist leash is when you jibe, you kind of have to do this little kung fu thing to get the mm. leash around there. I mean, you use a waist leash too, right? Or um, sometimes I have, but um, I've noticed when I tack with the waist leash, Sometimes the leash gets wrapped around my bun or wow. my pouch, so it just takes a little more um, awareness. Yeah. Camera mount? Oh yeah. So um, we're going to use this camera mount today. You'll probably see some footage from that too. Um, what I like about that mount is that I can start and stop the camera while I'm winging, so uh, I don't have to play it all the time. Like sometimes if you have it like at the tip of the wing or mounted on your board or something, it's a lot harder to get to. But this one, I can actually just while I'm winging, I just um, put my finger on the on-off button, and start and start and stop it as I'm going, so I don't have to film when I get getting worked in the waves or <laughs> trying to get up on the on the board. It must make it a lot easier to edit. Now. Yeah, it makes the editing way easier. But you know, the GoPro Max it does take quite a bit of time to edit, so I don't always take it off just because I know I'm, I'm, I don't have the time to do all the editing work. Um, but yeah, so we'll get some footage of that today, and then we got. Luke is here, he's going to fly with the drone, so looking forward to getting some nice footage. Um, today it's, it's like a good day, got, we've got south swell, we've got a high tide, and um, some strong wind, so it should be fun today. Perfect. Yeah. Sounds good. Alright, let's get out there, huh? Got it. Okay, yeah. so this is a kind of a tricky launch here, so I'm going to help Eli get in the water first. So this launch has got to be one of the most challenging places to launch for wing foiling just because it's shallow. Um, there's like pretty shallow rocks right there. <laughs> Eli's trying to turn his foil upside down, but it's really too shallow. This is his first time here, so he's still kind of trying to figure out exactly how to do this. And it's kind of funny because he demonstrates uh, how he turns his foil upside down if the wing if he notices the wing flipping upside down but it's kind of what I was talking about if, if you have the wing behind you and there's a, like a little gust an offshore gust it, it wants to flip the wing upside down which happened right there we didn't really get that on video but Eli quickly flipped his foil down so the uh, wing wouldn't hit his foil so he kind of um, saved saved it at the last at the last moment so that's good um, I'm really careful to keep the wing usually in front of me or uh, basically don't let it get behind me uh, keep it either in front or next to me so it can't flip upside down and then once you get to the other side of the stream uh, we can walk it's kind of shallow and sandy bottom so it's easy to walk out to the end of the stream while holding the wing and that makes it kind of a little bit easier and then once you get out past that stream then you can paddle out over shallow reef and it's quite a long way to paddle out over the shallow reef and then um, find get to a channel where it's deep enough to flip the foil downward so and then uh, wait for a gust and, and get out there but uh, once you get out there it's, it's an awesome spot especially in the evening it, the wind kind of stays consistent um, some other spots here on Oahu they, they work better in the middle of the day when you get kind of the thermal winds from the from the sun but this spot um, definitely usually the wind stays pretty steady all the way into the evening uh, it, all the way till it's dark the wind kind of blows down from the valley and, and it's like a nice offshore wind it's it is gusty though but um, just the offshore wind holds up the waves real nice and has like these nice long walls um, you know this this was a decent day not super big or anything like that but um, yeah, the waves are just really fun for wing foiling and 
usually it doesn't get too crowded because it's such a, a hard place to get to with a, the with a shallow reef on the inside, long paddle out with the foil pointing up and your wing, uh, you know, being really careful not to have the wing hitting your foil. So once you get out there, though, it's pretty awesome. This video, we, we already posted it a few weeks ago on, on the YouTube channel, but I just wanted to add it, add it here and add some commentary. Uh, Eli, super stylish on the waves. Um, you know, we were on a couple of questions that we had on the YouTube video that we posted where, um, you know, how windy was it? So, um, this was actually a pretty windy day. Like my, like I was using a four meter wing, which is on definitely on the small side for me. Like usually at the spot, I'll use a six meter wing on like an average day, but you know, when, on a really windy day, I'll, I was using a four min meter and then Eli was on a five meter wing and that was enough to get going and uh and definitely once you're up then there's enough wind but you know sometimes to get going you have to wait for a little gust to come along it's not a super steady wind spot there'll be like lulls for sure but then you know you'll get a gust and that that will help you get going so really nice conditions and um I was using the strut mounted camera mount so Got a little bit of footage with the GoPro Max as well. And then Lucas was filming with the drone. So thanks, Lucas, for getting the footage. Um, it's a little bit tricky in the evening to, to get the footage because the light's kind of starting to dim or, you know, like when the, the the cloud goes behind the sun, it starts to get a little bit dark for um, you don't get that those super vibrant colors that you get filming in the middle of the day. But you get that awesome, um, you know, the golden... Uh, lighting from the sun setting sun and uh, my, my favorite perspective is just like looking down like this um, towards diamond head with kind of the setting sun and the colors in the sky and just the uh, light reflecting off the water I think that's just a really beautiful perspective and this kind of is the mood um, for you know those evening sessions when you're just out on the water um, for a little session after work um, it's just a great way to end the day um, good exercise and a lot of fun so uh, yeah I try to get out there whenever I can uh, you know after after a long day at work it's a great way to unwind and not think about anything else other than just being out there and playing in the water it's one of my favorite things to do so yeah and you know carving on the wave super fun uh, you know, dropping the wing next to you. Sometimes the, the wave kind of closes out, so you have to kind of kick out. Here I'm doing like a little kick out aerial, but those are kind of hard to pull off. I'm still working on those. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Aloha. Okay, so thanks for watching these little wing foil tips. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And subscribe to the Planet Surf YouTube channel. See you on the water. Hello. Hello. Perfect.